My next guest says we're not out of the woods just yet and doesn't see much upside for stocks this year. Let's bring in Rich Weiss of American Century Investments. Happy New Year. Uh, good to see you again. Same here, Scott. Happy New Year to you. But same same New Year, same view. You, you were negative throughout much of last year, and here we are again. I, I'm trying to figure out why. Well, to be fair, we were negative throughout much of the last two years. So net-net, uh, it's not as bad as it might look. But you're right. We, we did not see, as many strategists didn't see last year coming, right, the recession that wasn't. And, and that held us into a more conservative position and didn't reap the benefits of especially that fourth quarter run up in stocks. But, um, you know, we're not out of the woods yet the way we see it. And you certainly don't need uh, me to, to read off that laundry list of uh, economic and geopolitical, uh, you know, issues that we're still facing. But I guess we'd argue that whether or not there's a, a soft landing or a hard landing slash recession, which is the current debate, that we see that as academic. Um, stocks have already priced in a pretty rosy scenario here for the most part. And so we don't necessarily see where the fuel is going to come from for much higher stock prices uh, uh, relative, certainly, to, to fixed income securities. Maybe just the Fed being done hiking is enough. I mean, haven't we kind of learned our lesson over the last you know, I don't know, 14, 15 years over what happens when the Fed is either engaged or not? Uh, fair enough. But uh, to be fair, uh, look back a little longer period. I've been in the business a little longer than 15 years. And if you go back, let's say, to 1960, uh, you know, when you look at uh, all of the, the Fed hike sessions, um, eight of them landed us in recession, eight out of 12, that is. Uh, one third of them or four times we hit a soft landing. And the eight times that we did hit a recession looked very much like this recent scenario where rates rose fast and furiously. So uh, the probabilities from a longer history indicate uh, something different than what you might take away from the last uh, you know, market cycle. Well, let me ask you the question then this way. What, what makes you more positive slash bullish on the market? Uh, on the bond market or the fixed? No, or the, the, uh, the stock market. market. Yeah, stock market. Uh, yeah, hey, if, if, if we can envision this Goldilocks immaculate disinflation scenario, which you know we don't buy into wholly because it's still a fairy tale, but uh, if we can see consistent earnings, if we could see the labor market hang strong, and inflation all come down to two percent. That's the Goldilocks scenario. Then I guess stocks uh, may have a little more room to run. But even with that, if rates are coming down, let's say, uh, you know, anywhere near what the futures market is calling for, which is what six cuts, one and a half, two percent, give or take. If that were to happen, take your average duration bond portfolio. If you do the math there. Uh, let's just, for, for round numbers, let's say rates came down 2% with a duration of 5 6%. You got a 12%, 10 12% capital appreciation on fixed income securities, diversified bond portfolio, plus the coupon. You're talking about 15 17% in fixed income, uh, a much safer play than the equity market. So I, that's why we're leaning that way at the margin. But... Doesn't do you not believe the data? I'm, I mean, I, this serious question. I mean, it it because the last reports that have come out would suggest we actually are in what you say is a fantasy. That being Goldilocks, that growth is going to hang in there, and inflation has already come down at a much faster clip than the Fed itself had expected. I'm, I'm you know many strategists, maybe yourself included, would would be in that that boat as well. So this Goldilocks scenario seems to be why stocks rallied from the end of October to the end of the year and are still, as I suggested at the top of our program today, not all that far away from a new closing high on the S&P. Right. But yes, agreed. Uh, two, two caveats to that. One, let's inflation has come down uh, pretty fast. But what, what are we going to see it tomorrow? The CPI and then the next day PPI. If CPI comes in at a, let's say, the, the consensus expectation of roughly 0.3% for December, that's still at an annualized 3.7% rate, okay? Not quite double 
uh, but nearly double what the Fed is shooting for. Right, so, but it's not nine, right? But it's not nine. I mean, that, that's, that's the key, right? At some point, you have to believe in the trend. Right. But we're not there yet. And, and so that may allow the Fed to 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 stop hiking rates. But I don't know that it, it gives them the leeway to start dropping them precipitously. We'll see.